أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل الله وما يضلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Our topic today is marriage and love. Marriage and love. The place of marriage in love, the place of love in marriage. Love can be difficult to articulate, can be very difficult to explain. After all, there's no universal definition for what gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart, that feeling in your mind, that feeling that's so difficult to to articulate to explain so love is hard to find it's even harder to keep it when you have found it and sometimes it's even more difficult to recognize it when you see it it takes time and effort to keep love going but you don't mind because you will do anything in the world to keep that love forever once you experience it you don't want the experience to go away again I want to assume that there's hardly any um, culture in the world that doesn't have the word for love in their language. What's love called in your language? If eh? Uh -huh. So. Okay, so that is to love. Yes, so. Uh -huh. Which other way do you call it in your language? Who can tell me again? If eh, so, or is it? Uh, what's it called in, um, in Igbo language? Okay, how do you say I love you in your language? Nafe. Nafe do he. Allah akbar kabira. Oh, Allah, Allah is great. Allah is great. Allah is great. So love can come in so many languages, can come in so many words, can come in so many forms of expression, depending on what you look love, what you look at love, and what love looks like in your culture, and how you express it to one another. Love in its various forms act as a major facilitator of uh, what we refer to as interpersonal relationships and owing to its central psychological importance is one of the most common themes in people who are creative when we talk about creativity or creative art i believe love is among those things that make people to be creative and uh, i want to ask you this question it has always bothered my mind why do couples claim to love one another yet they still fight they still beat each other yes they call, they still mess up each other's lives they still embarrass one another and they say they love one another does love work that way the husband and wife will say they love each other the next moment they turn around they begin to fight they begin to quarrel they begin to be to go destructive against one another they go all out to hurt and to injure one another. To inflict injuries, physical, psychological, and emotional injuries on one another. Is it love? Does love work that way? Why is it that people will love each other by the time they get married? Things will just change. And that love, you wonder where it has gone to again. People who are all out in romance. After a while, you see the whole house will be turned upside down. Everything will become cold and chilly negatively out of malice that they keep against one another. Husband is not talking, wife is not talking, and the children are not smiling either. Why? Why does it happen like that? Why is it like that? May Allah have mercy on us. Now, let's look at it again. How does Islam look at love generally? I'm generalizing a lot of things now. How the Quran and the Hadith look at love so that we understand vis-a-vis -vis love and marriage or marriage and love in islam love encompasses a universal concept of brotherhood that applies to everybody who holds on to the faith of islam the moment you are a muslim we believe that you understand what love is all about as far as islam is concerned to be a Muslim is to understand love, is to practice love, is to show love to others. 
Among the 99 names of Almighty Allah, one of such names is Al Wadud, the loving, the loving one, the one that loves. And you find that in Surah Al Hud, Quran chapter 11, verse 90. Allah says, Wastak firu rabbakum, thumma tubu ilayhi. Inna Rabbi Rahim Wadud. And ask forgiveness of your Lord and turn to Him in repentance. Verily, my Lord is most merciful, most loving. Quran chapter, 9, chapter 11, verse 90. That was said by Shu'aib to his people. In other words, anybody saying that ah, there's no love, people don't talk about love in Islam, and the person has not really studied the Quran. One of the names of Allah is Al Wadud, and the Quran speaks in so many languages, in so many forms, referring to love. A very strong kind of love. And also in Surah Buruj, chapter 85, verse 14, Allah says, Wa wal ghafurul wadud. And Allah is all forgiving, is all loving. He will forgive you and he will show love towards you. Meaning that it is part of his nature, it is part of the being of Allah to love his creatures. And when we want to be those who submit to the will of Allah in Islam, it is compulsory on us to adopt that quality, that attribute of Allah to show love. Whoever is not able, not capable, or refusing to show love, that person has not fully grasped the essence of Islam. Take that from me. You see, Allah is referred to at the beginning of every chapter of the Quran, except right to Tawbah. Allah begins with Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, the most compassionate, most merciful. That compassion and mercy, those are the attributes, those are the, um, uh, the, the practice of love. That is love in motion, love in action. You cannot show love unless you are compassionate and merciful. In other words, every believer, every Muslim that ever reads the Quran and starts with Bismillah Rahman Rahim is, de is de describing the attributes of Allah in terms of love, compassionate and merciful. Is, that is indicating that nobody is more loving, nobody is more compassionate, nobody is more benevolent than Allah. And if you are submitted to the will of Allah, you've got to be full of loving kindness. Allah Akbar. So the Quran exhorts Muslim believers to treat all people, especially those who have not persecuted them, with birri. What is birri? You see that in Quran chapter 6. Verses chapter 60, verses 8 to 9. Surah to Mumtahina. You also see that in Surah to Bakara, where Allah says, Al Birra, and to Al Ludu, Akum Kibal, Al Mashrik, Al Maghribi, and so on and so forth. Al Birrim is a kind of deep kindness. It is righteousness, but a very deep kind of, kind of kindness. Yes, Al Birri is also used in the Quran in describing the love and kindness that children must show to their parents. You, you see what that means now. So al birri is another way of explaining what love is all about. It's a kind of kindness. It's a kind of righteousness. And then we also have another word, ishq. Alif, shinun, and ka. Ishq. Ishq is defined or described by the Sufis as divine love. The Sufi, you know what I'm talking about. The Sufi, the people like, um, um, what's his name? Uh, Imam Ghazali and the rest of them. That's um, I, at least that's an example of a Sufi. So the Sufis they use the word ishq to describe the divine love of, of Almighty Allah. Those who practice Sufism they believe that love is a projection of the essence of Allah to the universe. Love is the way Allah relates to the universe. In fact, there's there's um, there's a statement that Kataba Allah Nafsi Rahma Allah has made mercy compulsory for himself in other words the whole way of the way Allah relates to the dunya to the world and the humankind and everything inside is out of love not out, not because we deserve anything but because he loves us he shows mercy on us how many of us wrote an application to be born how many of us brought a note from somewhere to Allah that you want to be created as a human being it is the love of Allah that has given us the chance, that has given us the grace, that has given us that opportunity to be alive and to be counted as a human being. And greatest of them all, Allah has made us to be Muslims, believers, who call on his name and count on his mercy every time. If you want to do something, you say, Insha Allah, 
with the will of Almighty Allah. You are counting on his will, you are counting on his permission, and invariably you are counting on his love because you don't deserve it. He gives it to you because he loves you. That's what it means. So the Sufis, they believe that everything you see in the universe should be a reflection of the beauty in what Allah has made. They decide to see beauty in everything. There's nothing the Sufis see and he says it's ugly. No. Because he believes that everything Allah has made, everything Allah has created is beautiful. Because Allah himself is beautiful. Allah Akbar Kabira. So they now refer to Sufism. Sufism refer to the way of Islam, the path of Islam as the path of love. Allah in Sufism is referred to in three main terms. The way they refer to Allah. They refer to Allah as lover. They refer to him as loved. And they refer to him as beloved. Those three ways they are still talking about love. With the last of these terms being often seen in Sufi poetry. Whenever they, they refer to they refer to him as beloved. Whenever they, they, they may not mention Allah directly, they say the beloved. The one that is to be loved. Because he loves us. It behoves you as a way of reciprocation to love back somebody who loves you so much. So they believe that everything about Islam is you are showing that gratitude to Allah for having loved you. You love his creatures. Allah loves you so much, you love people that are under you. Allah loves you so much, you see any of the creatures of Allah, you show kindness to that creature. Remember somebody who they said, the prophet said will go to paradise because this person saw a dog that was thirsty and the person went into the well and brought water up for that dog to drink and the person will go to paradise. That is love. You show love to every creature, not discriminating against them. See, even dogs as people look at them in a negative way generally the real sufis those who believe in love as far as islam is concerned they don't hate animals the prophet said don't keep this dog for this purpose but the prophet didn't say you should hate it to the extent that they refer to what happens right to calf do you remember the dwellers of the cave the ashabul calf they had a dog with them and Allah said a lot of good things about those people and the dog was counted amongst them as the ashab al calf the dwellers of the cave meaning that you, you get Allah Akbar, you get to see that it's not that Allah hates dogs or Allah hates other animals or anybody it is not human beings that Allah hates most of the time it is what they do that Allah doesn't like do you understand how the Sufis think it is not the human beings that Allah will hate it is what they do wrong that Allah doesn't like. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu when he went to Taif and was stoned and he bled, and an angel said, let's destroy all of them. The Prophet said, no, 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 don't destroy anybody. Because even if these people do not believe, their children will believe. It is out of that love that, no, it is not they that should be destroyed. It is the evil thing they were doing that should be destroyed. Don't get it twisted. Even when you criticize things, you don't criticize people, you criticize what they have done wrong. This is love. Allah himself doesn't condemn us. It is what we do wrong that he condemns. Because he's the one who has created us with his hands. And he loves and cherishes. He's the lover and the cherisher and sustainer of everything he has created. What would Allah do gain in punishing us if we, if we are grateful and we believe he doesn't need to punish us because he still loves us despite and in spite if a person has committed so much evil and the person turns back to allah he will accept the person and that's why Allah combines two attributes mostly he is all forgiving is most loving he will forgive you out of love that he has for you even when you don't deserve it allah have mercy on us